You think you've seen automation, but you haven't seen nothing yet. We're going to follow this block round a futuristic autonomous cell that requires no human intervention at all. So, we're going to move on from the start here where all the raw material is added and that's it. Once the raw material is added, it goes into the system, which, as you can see from the size of it, is huge. This thing has space for all your raw material, all your finished material. It has spaces to expand. So we're walking down to the turning section, which has two Mazak Integrex machines with one robot loading both. But this entire walk we've just done these cells can be extended. One robot to every two machines. Now, I just want to take a minute to just say, look at the size of this thing. And it's all run off one system. You have milling, turning, cam, tool management system. Everything is run through this one system. Now, I'm going to talk to one of the Fast Stems experts who have sort this system out so let's find out more about the turning side so can you introduce yourself and also what is going on behind us hey thanks tom my name is heike halila um, part of fostem's automation team so to say and what is happening here yeah flexible batch manufacturing internal world now obviously this takes no human intervention at all from raw billet all the way up to finished part so how is the FastM system doing this? Yeah, so everything starts naturally with the production order, which is coming through an ERP interface from our customer system. Then what we make sure that, that all the resources are available before any physical movement happens. So, so we make sure that the tools are there, the lifetime of the tools are there, the right raw material is there, the NC programs are there, and the setups which we need for executing the batch is there for the machines prepared. And this is all done autonomously. There's no, there's nobody in here. There's nobody programming. There's nobody doing anything. Oh, that's that's our manufacturing management software, which is taking care of that resourcing check. And if something is missing, we are definitely going to be uh, letting the operator know with a clear statement that hey, you need to be preparing this resource by then. Otherwise, the production is not going to be keeping on schedule. I don't like how you said the system will even make sure the right tools are in the machine, and if they're not. Yeah. It will either load them if it has them in the library, but if not, it'll tell the operator, wait a minute, am I at all missing? Yeah, without a doubt. So, so that, that's one of the options. And as you can see in this cell, so, so we have a big tool uh, storage also embedded into this robot cell. So we can also change the tools to the magazines automatically to make sure that the next, the next batch which you're going to be manufacturing is prepared. So how hard was this to accomplish a whole turning cell completely running unmanned? Uh, that's, a, that's a great question. Honestly speaking, there are always some, some challenges with projects, but, but that's what we do. You know, that's our daily business. So, so we solve the, the production-related problems of our customers, and that's what we're passionate about. And I'd just like to say as well, this isn't for just high batch work as well, because your robot can even change its own grippers as well. Yeah, so, so definitely this is everything else than high, high volume. This is for flexible batch manufacturing starting from batch size one up to a couple of hundreds. This is what it's designed for. And, and the capability of the robot cell here is that, as I said, so, so we can change actually setups to fit the next batch which you're going to be producing with those machines. We're going to be making sure that the tools are there. We're also going to be then doing the loading and unloading, what typical robot cell is doing. But what Fustoms is doing, we're doing a lot more. So we're doing the data integration and then making sure that your production runs according to the schedule, which is in the end the most important thing, that actually the right things happen at the right time, and not sometimes, but all the time. Now to me, that is bonkers that you've managed to create something like this. And like I said at the start, this has never been done before, has it, to this sort of scale? Yeah, if we think about the, the level of integration what we have in this system, so definitely one of, one of the firsts, so to say. Now, I'd just like to say a big thank you for, you for your time and thank you for taking us through this entire turning cell. It's been great to learn all about it. Now, we're going to carry on around the tour and we're, we're going to talk about the milling side of it now because 
I, there's so much information going through. My brain is just overloading. I just can't. I can't quite gather how the guys at Rodin even put this together. So this all started from a design. These guys started with uh, metal uh, laser cutting and plasma cutting, and they saw that they could all dominate that. But why couldn't you do it in manufacturing? So they then started this. And I'd just like to say, before you keep going, Joe, if you just look down there, look at the size of this thing. Now, we're gonna carry on through to the milling section and we're gonna find another Fast Stems expert to talk about it. So, thank you for your time, first of all. And can you introduce yourself and what's happening on this side of the building? Hello, so my name is Matti Kangas. I'm working as a Fastem sales manager. So, uh, and here you can see the first step or basically the first operation what happens in the milling side of this system. So practically here you can see as soon as the customer has replaced an order, we will automatically bring the needed material over here and the robot has an access he has already selected a correct gripper to grip the part for the first operation. And we have there a, uh, two stations where we can clamp purely mechanical vices with the screwdriver automatically. And, uh, and then parts are ready to go to the next step, next operation in this milling area. Now, just before we move on to the next area, because we're actually going to move in to the two Mazaks you have. Obviously, a robot will put these pallets in as close as possible every time, yeah. but there may be some slight, um, the, the pallet might be slightly skew. Yeah. So how does the robot know exactly where to pick the parts up from? Yeah, exactly. So you can see in a corner of each pallet, there is this uh, metal plate, and it takes a couple of seconds when the robot makes the, takes the measuring program and exactly detects in which orientation and in which position the, the pallet locates. So it doesn't matter how many times that pallet comes and goes, it's going to be in the exact same place every time. Yeah, absolutely like that. Yeah. Now, obviously, we've spoke about this bit. So where are we going next? Where's the next section of this operation? Okay, let's go. Uh, let's pass the two variaxis machines and see what happens in our pallet automation part where we have a Robo FMS in action. So obviously this, this is all working again. So are we going into this first section or the next one? Next one. So if we just keep moving down, sorry Joe. Yeah. Obviously this, so, with all the walking we keep doing, this just should show the viewers at home yeah, just exactly. how big this automation system actually is. It's, it's an entire building. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. The, the, the business plan was made like that. We have a hall, we have a certain free area for the automation we want to have those six machine tools, both sides connected. We have to place every function in this area. So here you can see, so to say, Robo FMS, where the, another robot, which back practically gets the loaded part from the previous operation. So this robot is taking the loaded parts, placing the device on the racking, waiting, that it's time to go to the machine tool for the for the milling operation. Also, the robot takes care that all needed tools are available in the magazine. So we have here a huge uh, tool storage, including approximately 800 tools. So all these 800 tools plus the tools in the magazines are available all the time for the all parts and for the all operations. Now, obviously. One question I've got, and I'm, I'm, I'm wondering if some people at home will feel the same, is this whole cell turning a milling, well, we'll talk about the milling side because we're here, yeah. runs itself. There's no human interaction. The whole thing yeah. runs itself. So how does the system make sure that all tolerances on a part have been machined to? Yeah, so basically the NC programs and the simulation are, are executed in the CAM system which are, are very tight integrated to our, our MMS control. And from there we get all needed information to make sure that that happens. And then also, um, 
Am I right in saying that once a part has been machined, it then gets, it, it comes out of the machine and then gets inspected, and if it's not quite right, it then the system will automatically find out where it can get that back in the machine to move it back to size, should we say? In this system, uh, there is uh, possible to have a machine uh, probing for the parts, but basically all the quality checks for the parts after the machining operations are done outside of the system. Well, I, I'd just like to say a big thank you to you for your time and your sure. information. It's overwhelming, I think is the word I'll use for this. Yeah. Um, so thank you very much. You're welcome. This system is the heart of this entire operation, which the guys at Rodin actually have a quoting portal, which um, is something we need to just go over. So you can go on their website, you can load your model in, you can then load a step file in, which is, um, sorry, you can load your step file in, you can then load a DXF file in, which has all your tolerances on, and it will give you a quote back instantly. It, you put your material in, everything is done by then. Now, just before we finish, I just want to mention this last little point. So, this system even has toolware into its system, so it knows how long a tool should last before it needs replacing. Once that tool needs replacing, then the robot will bring it, will drop it in here, and then an operator can come and get that tool, change it out for a brand new one, put it back after it's been measured, because they also have Zolli integration with this. So they can put the tool back in measured, it will go back into the system, job done. Now at the moment, this is done by hand, but they're actually looking at getting an AGV to do this as well. So a, so a programmer, an operator, can sit at the Zolli machine, he can just probe tools all day long, sending them to and from the machine, and what more would you need? Now, we followed the story of that little billet all the way through. Now, we've talked about turning, but the part they're running today is just milling. And I just want to see, this is the finished part. Now, this part comes out at the same place as the raw material goes in. So, I think to end this, what we can say is, is this is the start and end point that runs this entire automation cell.